the story on the broadcast is the build up at the line of actual control there is satellite imagery and then there is intelligence input and both seems to indicate that china has moved some of its artillery and armored personal carriers in its location but not far from the line of actual control so is this some kind of coercive diplomacy that china wants to undertake india of course is not getting deterred by china by china's deployment and movement india also has a large number of troops deployed along the line of con actual control and this no longer is restricted to the ladakh sector is what top sources in the government tell india today india today is manjeet singh negi and abhishek bhalla with our top story day 27 and the ladakh standoff hardens further China continues its provocative mobilization while India matches China troop for troop. In the biggest new development, top sources tell India today that China has mobilized artillery and armored units close to the line of actual control in Ladakh. Apart from aggressive muscle flexing, the larger design experts believe is to occupy commanding heights from where the Chinese can reach close to Indian locations in just a couple of hours. I believe that China wherever it's coming along the LSE or in terms of perception across the LSE it's going to stay there for a long time and it's going to be sort of a permanent nature deployment it has already deployed a lot of weapon systems in depth in the years 2018 19 which has fastened the mobilization time of China into many territories in Tibet and it has also uh, given it a uh, hope to come and occupy pockets along and across the LSE at will India too is matching the mobilization with its own. India has now moved a huge number of troops from different locations and other high altitude points to the Ladakh sector to match the Chinese deployment. The Chinese aim was to make deep incursions into the Indian territory, but timely intervention by the Indian army stopped them. Such attempts were made at multiple sectors and not just where the flashpoint in eastern Ladakh is. Even as both sides continue to face off at multiple locations along the border, there have been multiple rounds of talks, both at the unit level as well as at the brigade level. But all talks have so far yielded absolutely no breakthrough. Now, major general level talks are going to be held soon to find a way to de-escalate. Both nations continue to look for a middle path. Let it hang. But I want to tell you that we don't look at any other country with an eye. We don't want to create fear in any other country. हम सबको साथ लेकर चलना चाहते हैं हमारी कोशिश यही है वाल बेजिंग हैज बीन ओपोजिंग इंडियन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बिल्ड अप इन ईस्टर्न लद्दाख स्पेशली इन द दौलत बेग ओल्डी सेक्टर न्यू दिल्ली हैज मेड इट क्लियर दैट देयर इज नो बैकिंग ऑफ विद चाइना अंडर इंटेंस ग्लोबल ग्लेयर ओवर द स्प्रेड ऑफ कोरोना वायरस फ्रॉम इट्स सॉइल द ओनली वे आउट फॉर द स्टैंड ऑफ इज थ्रू डायलॉग एज एनी फर्दर एस्केलेशन गुड कम एट अ वेरी हैवी कॉस्ट विद अभिषेक भल्ला एंड मंजीत नेगी इन दिल्ली ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे that the dragon seems to have mounted a multi-pronged offensive this just isn't mobilizing its troops but it's also fighting the war in the mind space so china is using cyber space china is using social media whether it's facebook or twitter or other platforms by giving out an impression that a lot of activity is happening india on the other hand is quite calm in its approach the deployment is tremendous all along the line of actual control on either side there will be consequences there is no denying this fact but it's also a fact that china is trying its sun tzu as many say the doctrine of trying to win a war without firing a bullet but 21st century india china would well realize there is also a chanakya niti and that clearly is not happening flexing its military muscles on multiple fronts but that's not all about china's aggressive show of strength amid the pandemic the asian powerhouse has unleashed another warfare on a different battlefield social media 
The Chinese establishment has mounted a massive network of coordinated propaganda across Twitter, Facebook and homegrown assets operating in the mainland. A New York-based intelligence firm, Graphica, has recently published a report suggesting how Beijing is using social media to influence public opinion across the world on topics sensitive to the Chinese establishment. Titled Spamouflage Dragon, the report discovered a flood of fake messages. Sampled this post on a Chinese platform claiming Indian troops have intruded into Chinese territory. And then there's a video clip of the 1962 conflict. The motive is clear, provoking nationalistic sentiments. International security experts have already warned China's military buildup at Ladakh poses a real threat of escalation. I think what the Chinese are trying to do is establish new facts on the ground uh, by pushing troops and material uh, to the limits of their claim lines. They want to change the status quo in ways that will advantage them. And they're doing it at a time when they are under pressure uh, because of their performance in the COVID crisis. But Beijing isn't comfortable with anything anti-China. Not even jokes, at least not on TikTok. Posted by mimicry artist Saloni Gore, better known as Nazma Api, this clip was taken down by the Chinese short-form video app within a day. Remember, vested interests have generously used TikTok to exploit religious sentiments in India during the virus lockdown till the Indian government asked the platform to moderate its content. Google's threat analysis group has removed 1,000 YouTube channels linked to Chinese propaganda. But the disinformation campaign seems deeply entrenched. With Ankit Kumar, Bureau Report, India Today. China's disinformation campaign is a clear and present threat. They're using war by other means. But you know one thing that China perhaps hasn't realized, India of 2020 is not India of 1962. And many Indians now know what happened at Nathula in 1967 and Sundarongchu in 1986 and 87, which perhaps many Chinese did not. So this is one fight that China will really need to think are there any tangible gains or is this coercive diplomacy to get more concessions out of India? Let's try and make sense of the dragon's actions. Joining me on the broadcast is Inan Tangan. He's a political affairs commentator who joins us live from Beijing. I have Professor Brahma Chilani, one of India's most well-respected voices on China and Ambassador Rajiv Dogra joining me on the broadcast, a former diplomat who again understands the dragon and its mindset very well. But Mr. Tangan, I want to begin by asking you, why would China do something like this at this point of time when the entire world is fighting COVID-19? China seems to be, one, mobilizing some of its forces, trying to change the situation, trying to change the status quo at the line of actual control. What does China hope to gain? Well, Gaurav, I would go back to your original uh, question what, you know, and what you're asking now. There's really nothing for China to gain. We're, we're really talking about goat pastures here. These are not valuable lands. They don't contain oil. There's not valuable minerals or anything like that. Uh, from the Chinese perspective, they see that there was a, uh, at least a miscommunication uh, stemming from India. There were statements made uh, in political bodies by ministers uh, indicating that they wanted this land back and that they wouldn't be satisfied until it was. And then there was this road building, which brought Nepal uh, into the situation. So the Chinese see them uh, wondering exactly what uh, India is up to. I mean, there was, uh, you know, the, the Indian Kashmir is an internal matter to India, but it was uh, the Chinese were surprised that that was uh, one of the big 
uh, issues, uh, initial issues after Modi won an overwhelming uh, victory. So I think there's a lot of questions. Also, uh, the way that the U.S. has been uh, treating okay. China, they feel that they are being ill-used. So uh, during a very intense time uh, emotionally with COVID-19, and I, I think from the Chinese perspective, they think they've done very well with COVID-19 in terms of controlling it and things like that. And we'll let history decide how that goes. But they see this as a very, very delicate time, and they're unsure of where uh, India is going. Fair enough. Fair enough. So you are saying that China thinks it's either Aksai Chin that India is talking about or you think it's something internal. But Brahma Chilani, if two friends, and especially after Prime Minister Narendra Modi engaged with Xi Jinping, especially at Wuhan and then at Mamalapuram, in case China had any doubts, there would be a discussion, there would be a conversation. What we see at the line of actual control and at more locations than one, appears to be a very different story. Well, Modi and Xi Jinping have met 16 times since um, Modi came to office. So there has been no dearth of engagement between the two leaders. Also, under Modi, China's trade surplus with India has more than doubled. So they are they're enjoying uh, a situation where they can they have their cake and eat it too. They are bringing in increasing profits from the trade with India. They are also mounting greater pressure on India. And I think we have to look at our broader China policy. When Prime Minister Modi suggested to Xi Jinping in 2018 that the two leaders should be holding an annual informal summit, that played right into China's yes. hands because China is the China's strategy is engagement with containment. They want to have the pretense of engagement with India while they are free to contain India. So having high-level summits and other engagement very much fits with China's India strategy. And, and we saw what happened at the beginning of this year. They, they kicked off 2020 by holding and publicizing large-scale combat exercises along the borders with India. So what has happened yes. in Ladakh now shouldn't have come as a surprise to India. Uh, this particular operation must have been months in the making. The Chinese must have planned that, planned exactly. this operation uh, uh, last autumn or so. And, and they have been, and the way they have entered, for example, you know, they've entered in two different uh, areas in, in terms of one, one one uh, type of encroachment is where their claim lines overlap with Indian claim lines, like in Lake Pangong. Another category of encroachments that we are seeing now is where there is no dispute whatsoever. For example, in the Galwan Valley. Previously, the Chinese had never raised any issue Absolutely. about Galwan Valley being on the other side. Absolutely. They've come way beyond their claim line. At least that is what is the impression uh, that we get here. But Ambassador Dogra, China appears to be playing at a bigger game. And that is very clear. China's intentions very clearly are more than just COVID-19 related. China's appearing to want to change the LSE and not just at Pengong So, but also at Galvan Valley and India today has produced maps from 1893 and 1909 that show not just Aksai Chin, but very clearly Galvan Valley to be a part of India. Well, absolutely. I think uh, right from the beginning, uh, you, you sort of made a distinction between the military issue and equally importantly, the social media cyber issue. Uh, I think we have to win and we have to convince not just the world opinion but our own people that India has the right case. For example, your Chinese guest, guest from China, has just now said that China, Chinese are puzzled, why is India doing this? Whereas the facts on ground are that Chinese came in and marched into our territory uh, and they did so in large numbers. So there is something wrong in our articulation of our case. Uh, because we keep saying that, you know, both sides are trying to find a solution. Both sides are not trying to find a solution. India is trying to find a solution. 
but china has already come into what we call uh, as our territory and we also make a mistake every time we say that lse is not defined in certain sectors why do we call it lse if it is not defined according to us we should at least give our perception of what we think is lse only then we can convince our people and the world that why china is the aggressor so i think firstly our communication has to be clear and firm we cannot say one day that you know transgressions take place from uh, both sides we have been saying that for years and now suddenly we say that no no indian soldiers have never transgressed because they know where the lse is so it's it's getting quite confusing the messaging from the indian side so first important thing is for us to be clear in our own minds that we need to win the public opinion and the public perception not just in india but also in china and the wider world only then we can move a step forward in making our case the second thing is what are okay. chinese intentions mr dangan you, you if i may say what are the chinese bluntly. intentions yes no but let let me let me get our guest from china to help us make sense of this what are chinese intentions india's fighting covid 19 india's engaged in helping the world whether it's giving hydroxy chloroquine or in any other way sending a medical team to different parts of the country to help them uh, shore up their fight against covid 19 on the other hand china as the us president also very clearly said you stop in china they stop flights from wuhan to beijing and shanghai but wuhan to europe and wuhan to america and wuhan to everyone else was permitted so what was china doing well quite frankly i mean uh, china and if you look at the airline schedules disputed that what happened is you had americans 40000 of them uh, people with american passports who came back from china not from wuhan wuhan was off and if you have any doubts about that please take a look at the airline schedules uh, i i know that uh, the uh, donald trump says a lot of things but you'll also know that a lot of them are in dispute now in terms of a, a number of issues uh, raised by my learned colleagues and to your original question there really is nothing for china to gain here as i keep saying these are goat pastures these are not places that are valuable there's really no strategic uh you know goal or advantage in this now in terms of disputed areas that's why they're called disputed areas because there isn't a firm demarcation you have a line of actual control uh it goes back and forth we're talking about plains with rocks on them this is not you know places where it's easy to navigate. So at this point it it seems like there's a a lot of desire to create a incident here uh, to blame China but it's not clear why China would be doing this unless they felt provoked. Now maybe it is simply a, a communication no, if, error. No even if China felt there. provoked but, even if you feel provoked there's a dialogue there is a mechanism there is a process even if China felt provoked there is a mechanism to be followed. it cannot be uh, yeah. you know trying to use auto on bismarck's gunboat diplomacy not not in 21st century and not with india but let me let me take that to brahma chilani brahma uh, you know professor chilani you you heard uh, tangin they uh, mr tangin they say that china perhaps felt provoked would you buy that argument especially at a time when he says why would china do this there is so much anger in india that so many commentators are now saying we don't want to buy chinese stuff and india should stop buying chinese stuff well there are two things here first this um, operation by the pla was very well planned it was timed for the arrival of early summer and the areas that have been encroached upon are not marginal territories they are not rocks these are highly strategic areas these are vantage locations that overlook enemy positions so the capture of these new areas by the pla is part of a well thought out strategy second which is a more important thing is that in international law a unilateral change of status quo by force even when that area is in dispute is regarded as aggression just because an area is in dispute yes does not allow one party in international law to unilaterally change the status quo 
to create new facts on the ground. So even if you take the Chinese argument that the line of actual control is ambiguous, that they are rival claim lines, that the area was in dispute, the fact remains that when one party, in this case China, unilaterally alters the facts on the ground, it constitutes aggression in international law. That's exactly what happened yes. in Doklam. And that's exactly what, what's happening in South China yes. Sea, that China unilaterally is changing the status quo. And in Doklam, there was an agreement to disengage. And no sooner than India disengaged, then the PLA began building permanent structures, including ammunition dumps, barracks, and other military structures. And today, most of Doklam Plateau okay. is firmly in Chinese control. So a disputed plateau, a plateau claimed both by Bhutan and by China, today is firmly in China's control. That's how China alters okay. facts on the ground. China alters facts on ground. China tries to alter facts in public perception. How should India respond? Ambassador Dogra, uh, India has dealt with China very, you know, very politely, very calmly when we had to. On ground militarily, we've seen the examples of Nathula in 1967 and we've seen Sundarongchu in 1986-87. How should India respond? Uh, you know, because in India's public perception there is a lot of anti-china sentiment with so many people now saying let's boycott things chinese is that an emotional outburst or is that actually doable well i think firstly uh, no one would want any kind of armed conflict to uh, take place and let's hope uh, it never takes place between india and china they are just two very big countries and big powers uh, to afford a war. Uh, it will hurt both sides. So on that there is no doubt. As far as handling China is concerned, I think firstly we have to be clear in our minds as to what are Chinese intentions. The Chinese intentions uh, are not just to grab a, a, a piece of uh, rock or uh, barren land. The Chinese intentions are strategic in nature and they have been so since 1988 when they started nibbling away at the Indian territory. They've done approximately 650 square kilometers of Indian land, according to one study, which was uh, made public recently. Uh, why uh, have they done so now? Because President Xi had announced that we will not let even a single inch of Chinese territory to be taken by someone else, and that by 2021, every bit of China as per their perception conquered or taken by other parties would be taken back. So uh, the timing is just right from the Chinese viewpoint. We should have anticipated this. Yes. I think there has been a failure somewhere but this is not the time to find fault with ourselves okay. or our agencies. The time now is to assess what is the next move from the Chinese side and whether they will step back or like Doklam, they will uh, try to gain further mileage uh, through, through the talks and reinforce their position. So uh, I think we have to devise a okay. strategy. Mr. Uh, Tangan, I have, I have 30 China seconds on the broadcast. The moment, does China realize, fair enough, Mr. Tangan, does China realize the kind of emotions in India, does, does China think that they can brazen it out like they're trying to do in South China Sea or East China Sea, uh, even at the line of actual control, with no consequences for China? Well, I think they're well aware they have an ambassador in, in India, and I'm sure he makes reports. Uh, but keep in mind, there's you, everyone keeps talking about strategies and things like that, but there's really nothing uh, for China to gain. Uh, by antagonizing India. Quite the opposite. They've been trying to engage India in their minds. It just hasn't worked out very well because of the three-cornered competition between America, uh, China, uh, with India in between as a kind of, uh, uh, you know, it could, if it goes towards China, China will, uh, and India will create the new Asian century. This is not in the American interest. And there's this question of which way uh, India wants to go at this point. And I think that's what China is really looking for. Okay.
Of course, with aggression at the line of actual control um, and, and the way China has behaved in a rather hostile manner, whether at nuclear suppliers group, at the UN when it came to sanctions against terrorists like Masood Azhar supporting Pakistan state-sponsored terror, China really knows where, which side it wants to go if it wants 21st century to be Asia's century. Well, I will let that be the last point on the show. Mr. Tangan, Brahma Chilani and Ambassador Dogra for the moment. Many thanks for joining me. We will track the story very closely, but that is all I have for you on the show this evening. Many thanks for watching. Hi everyone, Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.